Hey there everyone, this is Danielle with some first thoughts on Kirby and the Forgotten Land. As you can see, this is the demo. The game has not been released yet, so these are going to be like partial impressions. I have no idea how big the demo is. I don't really know much of anything about it at this point, but we're going to dive in. We're going to have a look. We're going to see how we go. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I should mention I adore Kirby games, just like Kirby Superstar, Kirby... Oh my god, Kirby Squeak Squad, Kirby... Kirby the Amazing Mirror, this, Kirby Planet Robot, this game is fantastic. It's so good. Uh, I love this series. I don't love this one so much, so I'm really hoping that this one is better. <laughs> um, it's interesting, this is the first game in the series to... Well, it's not really the first game in the it's the first main game in the series, I guess, to let Kirby roam around in three dimensions. Uh, famously, like, Mario got a Mario 64, Nintendo 64, and that was the first, like, 3D platformer that really succeeded. Kirby 64 was a side-scroller. It was, um, it was rendered in 3D. It was like a 2.5D kind of game. Uh, Kirby has never had a full 3D platformer. Uh, there's been some, like, uh, spin-off games, like Kirby Air Ride, which had a city trial mode where you could walk around, and a couple of other games, but no mainline Kirby platformers up to this one have let you move around in 3D. Uh, unless you count this one. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna find out if Kirby in the Forgotten Land is good. Checking out this here demo. I'm really hoping it is. I already described this as the best Kirby game. And... Okay, it has co-op? That's... hmm. As I mentioned, Star Allies wasn't great. One of the reasons I think it wasn't so great is that they were focusing on making it like a multiplayer experience rather than a platformer that was good. Which is weird because there were previous Kirby games that had multiplayer, like Amazing Mirror, and they were fine. So. But we'll see how they go with this one. Spring Breeze mode. A Kirby game that's simple to play. You'll have a lot of health adventure for those who are new to action games. A Kirby game, wild mode. If everything's a bit wilder and more challenging, it's going to be tough at times to collect a lot of star coins and rewards. Okay, so we get a difficulty setting. Uh, Spring Breeze is the name of the first game, like, section in Kirby Superstar. So it's nice, that little reference there. Wild is not the name of a thing in Kirby Superstar. I'm going to go with that one, because I'm, pr I'm pretty good at Kirby games. Well, I've never played this one, so... Uh, we've got some pretty nice animation. I'm definitely getting, uh... Green Hill Zone vibes from the way they've designed uh, Popstar in this game. I'm not sure if that's intentional. <laughs> okay, Kirby jumps on the swoosh thing. Pull the warp star. Like, I'm just being silly. <laughs> I'm familiar with the character. That's Kirby. Uh, they are a star knight. They're basically a pink puffball that can steal uh, the abilities of their enemies by sucking them up and eating them. You may have seen them in Smash Bros, you may have actually played a Kirby game before. But yeah, their thing in Smash Bros is, oh, the same thing, like they steal powers. This sort of, um... Uh intro that's just like stuff happening with no narration or anything is I think Star Allies did that too certainly some previous Kirby games have done this uh I think I prefer it when they have a little bit more story Superstar had a bit more story than that uh oh now we're in Link's Awakening <laughs> uh yeah Superstar gave you a little bit more story for each of the games uh Planet Robobot has more story Triple Deluxe has more story and that one's a lot simpler than Planet Robobot. Oh, Crash Bandicoot? We're we playing Crash Bandicoot? <laughs> okay, I think I have control now. Yes, I do. Uh, I can tilt the stick a little bit, but I do have analog input. How fast I want Kirby to move. Uh, the B button is the suction of things button. A is jump. X and Y do nothing at the moment. Uh, holding 
L or ZL makes me do this. I think that's like a, a block and dodge, dodge roll type thing. Uh, the other shoulder buttons do the same thing. Uh, I can pause to play, change my controls. Oh, I can change it. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to switch it over to type B because B button is the jump button on this type of controller. That's just correct. Uh, I might put auto swallow off. I kind of prefer it the other way. I'm glad it's configurable. It's neat. Okay, back to the game. Uh, I notice here it's got a change difficulty option in the menu. I can't pick it because it's the demo, but it looks like you can switch it over whenever you want, which is nice. Okay, there we go. Uh, Kirby more or less controls the way you'd expect. The camera seems to be semi-fixed, like, like a Crash Bandicoot game, but I can move it around a little bit. Okay, we're getting a bit of a tutorial here. I don't know if the camera will become a lot more free, like in Odyssey, or if it's more of a 3D world sort of game. I'm hoping for Odyssey, of course, because I'm me. I'm here. Oh, I have a stand here, okay. I'm assuming, yeah, basic enemies don't tend to have a power. Uh, but there will usually be... I'm sure this game will have a bunch of enemies that do have powers, otherwise it's not really a Kirby game. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the very uh, the first few Kirby games, I think I think it was called Kirby's Dream Land was the first one, uh, on the Game Boy, did not have the copy abilities. They were added in afterwards. In, I think, the second one? Maybe it wasn't until Kirby's Adventure on the NES. I'm not sure. I'm not that familiar with the really old games. Anyway, Sword has always been... At least since they started showing the powers on Kirby by giving giving them hats and stuff, Sword's always been a bit of a Zelda reference. Uh... Hmm... In previous Kirby games, if you pause uh, after picking up an ability, it would usually tell you, like, uh, what different moves you can perform with that ability, especially in Superstar. But it doesn't look like that's a thing here. I do have a spin attack. I can charge up quite a bit, apparently. Ow. I'm not seeing any lives, which is promising, because I've talked about lives making no sense in these kind of platformers many a time. Yep, standard Kirby hovering. I'm definitely getting more of a 3D world vibe than an Odyssey vibe at the moment, but it might be just be for, for the tutorial. I'm hoping it opens up a bit more. Yeah, I'd love to have bomb ability. Give me bomb ability. Okay, if I hold it down, I can hold onto my bomb and aim it. And it just sort of sits there for a very long time. How long the fuse on these is. Uh, I can't fly any higher than this, I can't get on top of that, which is a bit strange. In in most Kirby titles, you just have infinite flight. Uh, I don't know if that's the case in this one, but you do have a wall. <laughs> Kirby 64 notably, like, made Kirby get tired, like this. Okay, you don't have infinite flight in this one either. But yeah, in most Kirby platformers, your flight is just unlimited, and so, like, the, the actual platforming is usually not the main threat, basically. A carrot. I shouldn't that just heals me. Uh, remarkably linear. I suppose the very first part of Odyssey is too, so... Uh, I shouldn't judge just yet. Amazing Mirror uh, was a Metroidvania. So like, they've done very non-linear Kirby games before. <laughs> Oh, oh, puppies! Uh, 
Oh. Oh, right, yeah, I saw a trailer about this. Uh... Apparently, Kirby eats cars in this game? <laughs> Interesting decision. Okay, and that replaces the other ability. Can I drop the car? Oh, I can. I can get out of it at any time. Okay, so I can suck it up, become a car, and I can go back out of the car if I want. Okay. That's cool. There were segments, uh, kind of, that felt a bit like, that felt a bit like this in, um, Star Allies, where you've got, like, a friend circle or a friend star or whatever, and that power-up was, like, the level was just scripted to have you have that ability. Here, it looks like that's not the case. It looks like you can make use of these if you want and avoid them at other times. Although, like, there were some walls I had to smash through there. I believe I could now unequip the car if I didn't want to use it, and it's just, like, a way of playing the game. Which is what I prefer. I haven't seen anything in the way of, like, replay the area collectibles yet. Uh, it's possible I'm just missing them, but in, in um, Planet Robobot and Star Allies, both, both of these games, uh, there were, like, three to five little thingies in each level you had to grab. Uh, it was code cubes in um, Planet Robobot, I forget what it was in Star Allies, but, like, it gave you a bit of replay value because you had to hunt them down in each level. Possible there's one up there that I've just found. I'll just backtrack a little. The approach to checkpointing is interesting. In previous games, it would more or less be you spawn on the screen you were on. Okay, that was like a red uh, star coin, and it was worth a lot more, I think, but it didn't show like a, you know, one of three red star coins found or anything like that. So, not sure how this works to be exactly. It definitely sounds like a Kirby game. Oh no, a Waddle Dee! Oh, I think you're supposed to rescue the Waddle Dees? I, I think it's basically the Toads in Origami King, which is not a promising way to start. <laughs> okay, so we actually have to drop the car here because the car can't climb. it out. There we go. You just you just stay there. Hang on my own. Let's see. Okay, these dogs seem to be the bad guys, and I'm not really sure why. They're like just dogs. Like, I know in, er in early game, Kirby often has pretty silly enemies, but these are, mm, I don't know. They don't seem as menacing as they probably should. I'm assuming that this game will end me fighting with some, fighting some sort of existential, like, terror, evil god sort of thing, because it's a Kirby game, but... Right now, we're not really seeing that. <laughs> Okay, I wish I didn't have bomb. Uh, I would, I would prefer a different power. Oh, bowling the bomb isn't bad actually. You just tap the button, like. Oh no, you're still throwing them overhand. It just looked like bowling because it's so quick. All right. Okay, I can't bomb that open. I just have to walk into it. Saved a friend? You! You saved me! Thank you! They can talk. But what about those other guys? The Waddle Dees? All captured. Taken away. We fought those beasts as hard as we could, but they kept coming back for more. Now I'm the only one left. I have to go save them. I have to. What? You'll help me save everyone? That's great! So, your name is Kirby? 
I'm El Elphalin. Oh, the elves. The little elf friends. Elphalin. Oh, are you gonna hang out with me? Yeah, you're following me. Okay. Grab the warp star. Age select. I'm curious as to whether this will be a thing in the final game or if this is just like because we're playing the demo. Oh, I was playing in hard mode? Really? I guess I'll leave it on hard mode and see if it does get hard. <laughs> Okay, I lost my power. I don't know if that's because I because of the, the weird stage select thing, or if that'll always happen when you travel between areas in this game. In previous Kirby's, like you, you kept your powers between levels, and you sometimes had to bring a certain power in if you wanted to get a hidden collectible. Oh, yeah, I want that. Yeah. Heck yeah, boomerang power. It's called cutter, but it's clearly boomerang power. I, I don't know why they called it that. Uh, evil bunnies? Okay, uh... Pink guy there is animating very weirdly. Like, if you watch closely, look at that. Look at what they're doing. Weird. I assume it's like when they're far enough away from Kirby, it, it simplifies their animation frames, but it's really standing out to me. I haven't seen anything that's in the way of unique collectibles yet. That might be the Waddle Dees you have to rescue, maybe? Hey. If I pull up Splimmer. Oh, hello. Okay, so there are some side quest sort of thingies. Mm. A vending machine? Vending mouth. Okay, so now I'm a vending machine and uh, I can do cans. I'm guessing I couldn't otherwise break these metal cans without being a vending machine. I would rapid fire if you hold down the button. Okay. Break the building shutter. There's a little waddle dee in the corner there. Did I rescue one? Not really sure. Okay, vending machine, you stay there. Did I just get? Is that one of the collectibles? Hmm. I'm not really getting a good sense of what the like overall game is because it's like little bite-sized snippets. Hmm. Oh, uh, you didn't get hurt by that. Of course you don't. Okay. Oh, there's there's my cutter power for me. We're hitting the warp star. Uh, look at this flower first. Cool. I hope we'd notice that my our elf friend isn't here now. Again, I should be able to flutter over there. Like, there's, there's no reason I can't. Kirby, Kirby can fly infinitely high. I am definitely getting 3D world vibes from the way they've designed this game. Which makes me sad. I would have vastly preferred to get Super Mario Odyssey vibes, and I am so far not getting them. I used to know all the names of the enemies in Kirby, but I, I can't remember any of them right now. <laughs> I think that guy's called the Kibble? Something like that. Uh, oh, wait, hang on. Okay, so you can still use suction when you have oops, when you have an active power, if you want to get one of these mounts. 
kind of confusing. Normally, like, when you have a power, you have to get rid of it in order to use Kirby's suck ability, but it looks like in this game you can still use it, provided you're standing near something like these camp- these, are uh, these VLC media players, uh, which can be picked up and, like, transformed Kirby with- does that make sense? It doesn't. I wasn't a sentence. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. I would assume these metal crates you can only break if you've captured something. Right, I'm going to use the word captured because obviously I'm going to use the word captured. Makes sense. Boop. I'm getting a lot of these star coins. I have no idea what they're for in this game. Because I assume there aren't lives, because I've got over a hundred of them, and that would normally be the point where you get an extra life. Oh, Tulip. I believe I'm looking for five of those, yeah. I'm not sure if I've missed any already, I hope I haven't. And then I can break this. And get whatever that is. Looks like those are the things you... you the optional collectible? Whatever those things are? But I, I don't know what they are. Are they like gacha capsules? I hope they're not. Up we go. The end of the level? That's a really short demo because it's the end of the level. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep Cutter. A oh, wild edge. Guessing the boss has sword power? Which is one I've already seen. The game doesn't seem to want to show me many powers. find out if the boss does have that. Yep, the boss has sword. I figured that's what it would be. Maybe that's not the end of the level, maybe it's just the end of like the scene or whatever? If that's, if that's the case, it's not too bad. I mean, I don't know how long the level is, it might be fine. <laughs> Yeah, I would definitely like more of an open world feel, feel to this. Currently, an extremely linear uh, experience akin to Super Mario 3D World, which I did not vibe with. Uh, game because the like the other 3D Kirby game, City Trial, is like a big sandbox basically, and the other other 3D Kirby game, Super Mario Odyssey, is also a big sandbox. <laughs> Yeah, we got the fixed camera angles, and we got the very linear stages. I I'm aware that many Kirby platformers had that style, but there are things like Great Cave Offensive and Amazing Mirror that were a lot less linear, and they were a lot of fun. And I think if you're going to 3D, like, it's, it's fitting, because if you think about Mario 64, which pioneered the 3D platformer, it did that. It did the same thing. And, you know, that game is... Beloved by all. Despite not having decent camera controls. <laughs> Seriously, I still love it, but the camera's sick. <laughs> I'm expecting to be able to run faster by pressing, like, the left stick or whatever. I think that's just because I've been playing, like, a lot of Horizon Zero Dawn, though. Because you do that in that game. Do I have to stand here? Yeah, I do. I wonder if you buy costumes, Kirby, or 
I don't know what the, what the coins are for. Okay, yeah, we need this because then we can jump onto this thing and go boop. Let's just save another world E. Oh, there's our little friend. What is this? Oop, oop, no, give, give me back, give me back the Master Sword. Hang on. Oh, hello. I saved all three of them. Uh, I mean, like a reward, or how does this work? More of these. Again, I don't, I don't know what the star coins do. Go up there? Okay, no, I can't. I guess this area is a little bit more... a little sandboxy. Like, it's... it does not compare to something like Odyssey, but... It's a bit... it's a bit more explorey, have a look around and find stuff, than previous parts of this... of this level of been, and this game. absolutely need to capture that traffic current there. I'm going to get up here. Oh, I see. The, the um, golden cage is the one that ends the level. That makes sense. And this way. Oh, okay. Uh, the uh, minus button is the same as uh, the A button, dropping your power, but it's like instant. There's no timer. You have to hold the button. So that's nice. I believe the select button did do that, like, instantly in previous Kirby games. So, that makes sense. Okay, I had a bunch of missions. Missions do. Mr. Tulip. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, are, are these gacha these, these, these are gacha capsules. Oh, oh no. Nintendo, why do you keep doing this? Nobody likes gacha stuff. Oh no. Please. Don't do this to me. Okay, I lost my power again. I don't know if that's just how the game works, or if it's because I'm playing the demo and the demo is a bit weird. I'm hoping the latter, because, like, carrying powers in from other levels is, like, a staple of Kirby play. Okay, I've got a, a shopping mall here. Uh, I believe I've mentioned on the channel before that I really enjoy parkour through shopping malls, so... Hopefully there's a bit of parkour involved. It might just be a boss battle, though. Uh, I can see bananas over there. Over here. Uh, invisible walls are over here. Hmm. Okay, what about over here? Okay, we've got some powers. Uh... Oh, ice. That's a new one. Go. 
Okay, it doesn't seem to increase your movement speed at all. I don't think it does that in other games either, though. I think it's about the same. Oh, the bananas are just to eat. I think. Okay, so you just, just you just breathe breathe ice and that's it. You don't seem to have any other powers. That's the boss. Oh, it's Donkey Kong. Hi. Oh, a quick time event. That's that's not a great start. Go Raimondo. a different power with like stunning in a different way or maybe the fight would be harder if I hadn't picked dice doesn't seem like the ice is actually affecting him that much to be honest he's just moving normally Oh, there we go. Thanks. That first one was not a unique copy of the idea. That, that that one was was in Kirby sixty four. Oh yeah, and your friend plays with a little Waddle Dee. And Anna Waddle Dee. Oh, our friend. Help we build Waddle Dee Town? Fill it with fun shops and activities. Oh, okay. Uh, 
No one likes... No one likes gotcha machines. No one likes them. Oh, you can upgrade your copy abilities? That is interesting. Tropical Wispy Woods, which is kind of funny. Beast Pack. Oh yeah, that's giving me giving me Crash Bandicoot vibes. Oh, there's Meta Knight. Oh, uh, there's King D to D. He looks a bit different. Blueprints, new central bottle copy bottle D's weapon shop. Also the eyes of fire ring. That's that's neat. Would have been nice to get a feel for how the game actually plays by giving me this town and like the real level select rather than the one they've given me here. Oh I can play them again with evolved. Oh yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Absolutely let's do that. Uh, no. Let's get back into Point of Arrival and have a look at it with different abilities. Yeah, we've seen this already. Apparently that was hiding a loading screen all this time. Okay, Sada Crash Bandicoot. This little part being so quiet is kind of nice. And that reveal does look pretty cool. Okay, sword is upgraded to Gigant Sword or, or probably Gigant. It could be Gigant Sword. Like, the word is pronounced gigantic, so I assume it's going to be like that. Seems like it's mostly just slower <laughs> than the regular sword. Which was is really an upgrade. Together, they make it like a bigger bomb? Is that what's happening? Oh, I see. I can put a bomb over there and then a bomb over there. Like, they get interconnected. I assume it's like if a monster walks across that gap, they both get zapped. Yeah, okay. Interesting. I think this one is more of an upgrade or at least a side grade than the other ones. Then Kirby eats the car. I remember what was happening. I'm curious to see if I get out of the car, or I guess get off of the car, 
get the car out of me. <laughs> uh, if I can break that wall over there using my regular powers. I'm guessing no, but I'm curious about it. Yeah, it looks like no. You, you do need to go back and get the car. I wanted to see what happened if you went off the edge. I think it's did a little bit of damage. Do it again just to make sure. Yeah, it does a little bit of damage. I guess I need to play the other levels to check what Cutter and Ice give you. Unless Cutter is in this one, I can't remember. Ice is definitely only in the boss, so I would need to go back to the boss arena. Well, let me skip this one. How you meant to use the chain bombs effectively? Because they roll into the edges and stuff, they don't really cover much area. Let's see if I can find all the tulips in this area too. I missed one last time. That's a tool. The other one I missed right at the beginning. What's the upgraded power? Chakram cutter. Oh, that that I like that. That's cool. Do these bunnies give you anything? They don't give you like bunny power, do they? Find out. Yeah, they don't. Not really substantially different from the previous cutter ability, honestly. Like, it looks cool, but it's not like, it's not nearly as much an upgrade as, like, the combo powers in, um, Kirby 64, for example. In that game, there were, like, I think eight base copy abilities, which isn't many, but then you could combine any copy ability with any copy ability, and, like, you got a new set based on that, so there were, like, was it 64 different copy abilities in the game? A few less than that, I think. I have to divide it down, but yeah. You just hold the button here, it's really easy. <laughs> What if it happens if you run out of soda shots, if you just can't progress? Oh, I see, this part's optional. Doesn't matter if you're on the soda shot. That makes sense. Tasty soda. Hey. 
another gotcha capsule. Okay, yeah, and that just leads back to where we were. I think I like Shark from Cutter better, so I'm gonna hang on. Ow. Come back. And yeah, there's no additional abilities. Like, if you use Cutter while running, in previous games you had like a little sword slash as well as having the ability to throw boomerangs. It looks like it's just the boomerangs in this one. Also, the little wings on your helmet don't do anything. Like, I understand that it often, the different parts of the copy ability were powered by pushing different directions, which makes less sense in a 3D game, but not having them at all is just really disappointing. Hmm. Time to become a traffic cone. That's a kibble. Got little doggies. Boop. Gotcha capsule. And we need to ditch this because of the ladder. Yeah, this is feeling very linear. Oh, they have little coins in there now? Yeah, that makes sense. They already saved the Whittle D. Yeah, I'm gonna hang out of this one. Okay, and the upgraded sword like looks more like makes you look more like Wild Edge. You've got like that fur and stuff, and you've got the sword that he's holding. So I guess that makes sense, kinda. I want to check if you have his shield as well. So I'm gonna take the tower and then. Yeah, you do. You get his little spiky shield. Neat. <sighs> it probably makes sense if you copy a boss to get the boss's version of the ability, regardless of whether that's the one you've... whether you've evolved it or not. But that doesn't seem to be how it works. I wish I haven't missed any tulips. One 
just go. I missed it. Look, unless there's one up here, yeah. Need to back backtrack a little and go look for it. Hmm. Let's go, Cone Mouse. that I've forgotten about. Guess the enemies respawn. Hmm, I already made that one. I just missed it. Doesn't seem to be in this area. Hmm. That's annoying. I was hoping to get all of them this time. Oh, I need the cone. Uh, hang on, it's over there. <laughs> okay, I'm cone now. Yeah, I guess I missed it. I didn't really see what's hard about wild mode. Like, I, I haven't died yet. Yeah. I got, a, I got a bunch more garches. Okay, we'll go to the boss so we can have a look at uh, what the ice ability does. And then I'm going to let the boss kill me because I want to see what happens if you die. Just because the game has not been hard at all. Like, I don't really expect Kirby games to be hard, but if it's going to have a difficulty setting that's described as being harder, I, I kind of expect it to be a bit hard. <laughs> hmm. I, I don't even know what changes it makes at this point. Go find the boss. Okay, so I've tried the other... Yeah, the other... What is it? Two ability? Oh, there's also Kata, which is not here. Frosty Ice. Oh, I can make little snowmen. That's kind of neat. That's actually a little bit, like, different to the original, rather than just, it's sort of the same, but bigger. Which is the case for several of the upgrades we're already looking at. Can I go over this way? No. 
No, you, you have to fight the boss. And you take a little bit of damage if you don't do that a quick time event. Oh yeah, you like throwing a penguin on your head, and that's why you make little penguin snowmen. That makes sense. Huh, he can grab you again. I didn't realize. if you die in this game. Boss is not very threatening. There we go. What happened? You lose a hundred. A. Is that always what happens or is that only what happens in quote unquote hard mode? There's a lot of health. I'm guessing I just take more hits. Again, like, why 100? Compare again to some other games. In this one, you die, you lose 10 coins. Uh, in Bowser's Fury, you die, you lose 50 coins. In this one, it's 100. Are we getting, like, death punishment inflation? Or what's going on here? Okay, my health bar is much longer. Is that the only difference? I want to try dying and see if I still lose 100 coins or if it drops down to something else. It's a lot longer. They're taking about the same amount of damage from each hit, so... Trying to dodge these attacks, I'm still getting hit. Literally standing still. <laughs> okay, no, it's still 100. The only difference seems to be that you have a longer health bar and the easier difficulty. You don't get regenerating health or anything, it's just a longer health bar?
Okay. I, d I don't really understand how that's really a sufficient difficulty mode. Hmm. I don't know, Nintendo are confusing. Well, uh... That's, uh, that's Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Uh, back. Demo. It's, um... It didn't impress me. Uh... I was hoping for something more like this. Uh... It's pretty. Visuals are really nice. Uh... But the copy abilities are so limited. They only do, like, the one thing, and you upgrade them, and they just sort of become a bigger version of the same copy ability. But, like, capturing... Uh... VLC media players and cars and stuff is kind of funny, I guess. But, like, this game, right? Kirby Planet Robobot. This game did something kind of similar, but was a lot more interesting and a lot more in-depth and creative. Uh, which is, Kirby can capture, like, copy any ability in the game, and they all have lots of different powers and stuff. But when Kirby hops into the robot armor, the robot armor can also copy all of the abilities in the game. And the robot armor has different versions of those abilities. Which is, is a lot more interesting and in-depth than... You, you can become a car and it works like a car. <sighs> it just, it just doesn't feel... It, it honestly feels like a little phoned in. Uh, I was really, I was really, really hoping for like an open world experience. It's not that, it's, it's like a Mario 3D world kind of game. And I was hoping for, you know, something with a lot of complexity and, and stuff to it, like Kirby Superstar or Kirby Planet Robobot. Both of those games, like, when you have a copy ability, it has a whole bunch of different uh, facets to it. Uh, like, for example, you get fire if you just press the B button or whatever the attack button happens to be on the controls this game you're using. Then you just, like, breathe fire. But if you start running and then press B, then you become a fireball and will sort of launch forward, for example. Uh, and then, like, depending on if you tilt up or down, you get different things happening, that kind of stuff. Uh, especially with powers like Fighter, which basically gives Kirby, like, a bunch of martial arts stuff, and there's, like, a dozen different moves, depending on which direction you push the stick and how fast you're going and all sorts of stuff. Uh, I don't know if Fighter's even in this game, and if it is, like, it would have to be dramatically simplified, because they haven't got... They've still got one button for using all your powers, and that one button only does one thing. Like, to be fair, there are good Kirby games where the copy abilities do exactly one thing. Uh, like, I, I mentioned already that I really liked, uh, that I really liked Kirby 64, for example. In that one, you basically press B, your copy ability does the one thing that it does. But again, because the copy abilities can be combined in pairs and you get a bunch of different copy abilities, there's a lot more depth there, it's a lot more interesting and compelling. Also, none of these other games... Okay, I think some of these... I think Robobot may have had like a gacha mechanic, but... It wasn't as front and centre as it is in this game, and... It didn't really impact things. Like, I, I think, like, you got stickers to put on the robot armor or something, but it didn't really impact stuff at all. And I don't think it used the star, like, you know, you got a three star thing, maybe pull again, you might get a five star. I don't think it had that mechanic. I, I, I was going into this really, really excited for a really, really impressive game, but. I don't think this is that game. Uh, when it's actually released, I'll probably have another look. Uh, I don't know if I'll actually... I, I, probably, I probably won't actually get it, but I might like borrow it or something and give it another go, see if it gets better. But as it stands, it... It's just a really, really basic Kirby game. Uh, like, Star Allies I had problems with, like, the... Like, 
how underwhelmingly simple and stuff it, it was complete compared to the lovely Planet Robobot, but this game is even simpler. Fire Allies still had the Superstar thing where, you know, you, you had variations on what you did with each copy ability depending on the button presses and stuff, but this game doesn't even have that. Oh, that makes me a sad pony. Co op feature is nice. Like, Planet Robobot here does not have co op. There's no multiplayer at all. Uh, and that's also true of Triple Deluxe. That's true of a lot of otherwise really good Kirby games. And it's not true of Star Allies, which is not great. So, you know, it'd be nice to have a Kirby game that has co op and is also really, really fun. But I don't think we're getting one. It's not yet. Like, if this had been more open-worldy, or if copy abilities had been more complex, or... Uh, or if, like, putting objects in Kirby's mouth worked a bit more like in Planet Robobot, where it's like an extension of Kirby's normal moveset rather than just sort of replacing it with this completely different thing that isn't... that doesn't have the same copying ability flavor to it. If any of those things, then this game, I, I probably like this game, but there's so many decisions they've made here that just don't vibe with me. <laughs> so many. And I mean, like... I'm just, I'm just really sad, honestly, because... I was hyped for this game. I I love Kirby, and I really wanted Kirby to get an amazing 3D platformer, like Mario 64 or Mario Odyssey. But it's not like that. It's kind of like 3D World, but it's pretty much like 3D World. Uh, but it's. I just don't know where they took it in this direction. Like, with all the ruined buildings and stuff, I kind of thought it might be a bit of an exploration thing, you know? Like in, like City Trial, where you've got a very big world, and you can go around and look at all the different bits of it and stuff. City Trial wasn't about that. City Trial was, you know, a, like a competitive game where you were looking for power-ups to your races as you went. It was, because Kobe Arrive was, was a racing game, but... Like, that had, that had more of an exploration feel to it than this game does. And like, just from the intro, that's what, sort of what I was expecting, you know? You get through the little Crash Bandicoot tutorial, and then you see the big city and all the ruined buildings, and you're like, oh wow, we're entering the world now, but it keeps being this corridor. Like, I, I know Crash Bandicoot is always like that, but it didn't have to be Crash Bandicoot, it could have been itself, it could have been a different game. <laughs> I, I just, I, I don't like ending these videos disappointed with the game, but I'm disappointed with the game, and I'm probably not gonna get it. It's a shame because I got this one and I was disappointed with it, and I regret that. It would have been nice to be able to get one. I get a Kirby game that I unequivocally loved, but uh, they haven't made one of those since this. So. <sighs> Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I hope my uh, melancholy didn't ruin the game too much. Didn't make the video too much of a downer. But yeah, that's Kirby in the Forgotten Land demo. It's possible, possible that being able to go to like the Waddle Dee Town or whatever in the final game might make it like a little more of a of an of a like, unified experience instead of having this level select, but it's not likely. Uh... Yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Bye!